good morning kids i hope everybody is uh, staying safe at homes i am very much happy to see the responses which you have given for the presentations posted in your cms i hope the rest of you will also be submitting your assignments before the due dates right now we will be discussing about the measurement of high ac voltages using electrostatic voltmeters by the end of this presentation i hope everybody of you will be able to explain the operating principle and constructional features of electrostatic voltmeters besides i hope you will be able to list the advantages and limitations of the electrostatic voltmeters coming to the introduction of electrostatic voltmeters it is often referred to as an esv or electrostatic charge meter unlike the moving iron and moving coil instruments which you might have used in our laboratories which work on the magnetic fields an electrostatic voltmeter works on static electric fields it is capable of measuring large magnitudes of voltages both ac and dc voltages in fact the accuracy is better in terms of ac rather than in dc voltages and as been said it works on the principle of electrostatic attraction force between two charged surfaces just like your parallel plate capacitor and it can accurately measure the voltages without making any physical contact and it can operate even at higher frequencies there are various designs in esv which can measure high ac voltages at megahertz also this is a simple operating structure of electrostatic voltmeter where you can see in the picture there that qq is a fixed sector nn is another pivoted sector the electrostatic fields between these two plates qq and nn because of the electrostatic field there will be a force between these two plates one will be fixed qq will be fixed whereas nn will be moving so if qq is fixed and nn is movable then automatically because of these things this is qq and this is nn then automatically because of this movement if electrostatic field varies thereby the electrostatic force varies and thereby this nn starts moving and to this nn there will be a needle which will be directly showing the voltmeter reading so the scale is calibrated in terms of the voltages so the movement of this needle is converted into the measured volts and as you all know as you have already studied in case of uh, electrostatic measurements sorry and measuring instruments course there will be three torques which will be produced in measuring instruments deflecting torque and uh, controlling torque and damping torque so your deflecting torque is being produced by your electrostatic force so here the controlling will be provided by some weight 
and the damping torque will be provided by your air friction damping. So once again repeating, a controlling torque by a counterweight, a damping torque by air friction damping and the major deflecting torque will be due to the electrostatic force between a fixed plate and a movable plate. See here, the electrostatic voltmeter utilizes the attraction force between the two charged surfaces to create a deflection of the pointer directly calibrated in volts. And when one of the electrodes is free to move, the force on the plate can be measured by controlling it with a spring or balancing it with a counterweight. So these two are the plates, QQ is one plate, NN is another plate, NN will be deflecting to which there is a pointer P which shows it on the scale. Now moving ahead, this is the governing equation of all electrostatic voltmeters. If you carefully observe in the previous slide where you have seen these two plates or two electrodes, it will act as just like your parallel plate capacitor. Assuming that this is just like your parallel plate capacitor and A is the cross section of each of the plate and S indicates the separation between these two plates. See so area A of each of the plates and S is the separation between these two plates and assuming that there is a dielectric medium between these two plates and it is having a permittivity of epsilon and the voltage across these two plates is V. See once again I am saying V the voltage across these two plates, epsilon is the permittivity of the medium between these two plates, C is the capacitance between these two plates, A is the area of cross section, physical area of cross section, S is the separation between these two plates. So the electrostatic force between these two plates is given by the first one see here. F is equal to minus dou W by dou S, where W is the energy stored in that capacitor which is equal to your half CV square. The same has been mentioned in the next one, see here, minus dou W by dou S, gradient of the work or here in case energy, force is the gradient of the work, see here, minus dou W by dou S which is nothing but W is written as half C square, C as you all know it is epsilon A by D. So in place of C the capacitance of a parallel bed capacitor epsilon A by D. If you write it there you will get half C V square into A by D. All these terms except D or what you call it as S. These are all uh, independent of your displacement. So if you take it down you will get minus dou by dou s of 1 by s which is nothing but 1 by s square. So this is the final formula. F is equal to half epsilon a v by s whole square. You see. Now since for working of your electrostatic voltmeter we do require one fixed plate and one movable plate. See here this is your construction. These are the futures. I will show you one by one. See, this is the high voltage terminal. This is your capacitance voltage divider arrangement. See, F is the fixed plate, M is the moving plate. There are two plates just like a parallel plate capacitor. M is the moving plate, F is the fixed plate. In between these two, you are supposed to develop an electric field. So this electric field is being developed by your, see here H, what you call it as card rings. It is just like a potential divider arrangement where the high voltage which you want to measure is applied to this card rings and this H will try to develop an uniform electric field and these F and M, they will be moving in this uniform electric field. F is fixed here. M will be moving, both will be, even though it is shown differently in the figure, both will be having same area of cross section. And to protect M, the moving plate, there is a G here, which is called as a guard plate or guard disc, which protects your M. 
So whenever you want to measure some voltage, you apply it here. When automatically it is applied here, this H will develop a uniform field. F is already present. This M will be adjusted based upon your field. So based upon this M, if it is adjusted, see here in the next figure, if you see, if M is adjusted, see there is a light source here. This light source here, the light beam will fall on this mirror and it will be getting reflected onto this scale if you carefully observe. If M comes down or if there is any deviation then it gives static field. If M comes down then the angle of incidence of this light onto this mirror varies. Thereby the angle of reflection varies onto the scale. So the different movements, the different voltages cause different fields thereby causing different movements of M. Thereby there will be different indications on the scale. This is how it works. See, this is what. See, an electrostatic voltmeter are made with parallel bed configurations and counterweights. And the most important thing is, these ESVs they will be having very small capacitance and very high insulation resistance. That's why these are called as devices with high input impedances. And if you want to measure this high voltage with more precision, what you can do is nothing but area of cross section of the plates is to be increased which means the diameter of the plate will be increased and the gap distance is to be made less that you can do so this is the construction you can go through the construction and uh, all these things and the entire arrangement if you can see this entire plates the fixed plate and moving plate which are enclosed between these guard rings in this one this one is completely enclosed in some pressurized chamber where you can use this insulating gases there. You can go with this air, carbon dioxide, nitrogen which you have seen in our first unit. Or else you can go with the vacuum also. So this is the structures of this different models of voltmeters which are available in practice. And coming to the advantages and limitations. The actual power loss is negligibly small because you don't have any direct contact of the moving plate with your own high voltage terminal and there are no resistive elements also here. So the active power loss is going to be very low. Loading effect because of low power loss there will be no loading effect, very minimal loading effect and it can be used to precisely measure voltage beyond 500 kV also, sometimes even up to 1 MV also with precision. But it offers some limitations, particularly the voltages which are very small, less than 50 volts or so. We can't measure these things because the force, electrostatic force will be very, very small for these amount of voltages. And for constant distance, yes, since F is proportional to V square only, if yes you are not moving, then F is proportional to V square. The sensitivity is going to be very, very small. So, I hope you have understood this one. Once again, a quick review. An electrostatic voltmeter works on the principle of electrostatic attraction. It just looks like a parallel plate capacitor. The biggest advantage is it can measure very high AC voltages and it is a device with very high input impacts. These are the key points which you are supposed to understand. And it can be used for very small measurements and uh, when the spacing remains constant. So with this, I hope you go through this presentation, you listen to this video lecture and attempt this one, this assignment. You just need to write this construction and principle of operation of electrostatic voltmeter and also list out the advantages and limitations of this instrument. Thank you. I hope this video lecture helps you in understanding. Well, in the coming video lecture, we will discuss about the peak reading instruments. I will be posting that video along with the PPT tomorrow. Thank you one and all.